Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror, and sci-fi, and anything else that I think is groovy. I hope that you'll enjoy tonight's offering, content for the blood god. <clears throat> I mean, on with the show. Um, tonight we have... Truth of Skinwalkers, stories from the uh, Navajo Nation, uh, viewer discretion advised, um, you know, for anyone with uh, sensitive uh, constitutions, this is for you. Um, let's boogie, ladies and gentlemen. Yo. This is Skinwalker. What the fuck? Hello? Oh, that's not natural. <laughs> That might be just stretching its muscles. That's just... Alright, whatever. It's just weird looking fucking animals at this point. Yes, I'm human. Let me sit at the table. Oh, that's just aliens. Those are just aliens. That's... Okay. Alright. Alright. <sighs> this one's gonna be a doozy for sure. Let me Sweet. just tell that's you that these are that's not boogie. skinwalkers. Everything you know about skinwalkers is a lie, except for the very few of you who actually kind of know what you're talking about. Now this video is going to be the first of my paranormal series, so there's going to be a lot more paranormal investigations, more stories, more talks about my experience at, experiences that I've had in the paranormal. So this first subject that we're going to cover is the Anagloshi, or best known as by everybody around the world as skinwalkers. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm going to hear about the lore, um, the lore of a people, I'd rather hear it from the people themselves. It's, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm entirely invested now. Well, yeah. Oh, not a hey, everybody. My name is Sean Clan, and welcome to another episode of Sean Clan Shadow Productions. So this one's going to be a little bit different from my niche, but not really different from who I am. So this one's going to be a different segue into my paranormal side of my channel. So this is going to be the very first episode I'm going to be going over. And I have to say, <coughs> I have seen a lot of misinformation out there about the subject I'm going to be covering. I've been traveling on the YouTubes, the TikToks, the Instagrams, and I've been seeing a lot of videos about... How people try to tell stories about skinwalkers. Here, for example, in this video, we see a skinwalker who has taken on the form of a man. Oh. Hey, neighbor. In fact, skinwalkers are basically wizards who've killed their loved ones. Now, I know a lot of you out there have heard stories or even claim to have seen a skinwalker in their lives. And I have to say that maybe, maybe like 80% of you are wrong. Let me explain. So, I know a lot of word has been spread across the United States, across all Turtle Island, and even the world about skinwalkers and the lores and the legends of it. And I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, they get some things right here and there, but I notice that they miss a lot of stuff. And, you know, I honestly don't blame them. You know, it's a hot topic. Uh, they're not from these lands, and so they do their best to get what they can from Google. And, uh, do the research online and so i'm here to set the story straight and now i know on our previous channel on everything the supernatural we've kind of covered this subject a lot but here i'm going to do it officially on my channel so 
Where does the Skinwalker come from? Where does the Yenagloshi come from? Where do they hail? Where do they live? Hey, I might even know what they eat. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but Skinwalkers and Yenagloshis originate from the Navajo Nation. Hundreds of years ago, medicinal people used to go to our four sacred mountains that border the Navajo Nation. Two in Colorado, one in Arizona, and one in New Mexico. Now these medicinal people would have to traverse the land very quickly to be able to do this ceremony within a couple days. So the spiritual people taught these medicinal men how to shapeshift, how to turn into animals, how to turn into deer, how to turn into coyotes, how to turn into hawks. And so they use this power to be able to traverse the land for good, to do really good medicinal ceremonies, to be able to help patients and in that old sacred way they used to do this but to be able to learn how to shapeshift was a very 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 hard task and was not easy to do so what people used to have to do they used to spend years of their life learning the songs going through ceremonies to be able to learn how to shapeshift into these animals now there's a lot of people that were out there they were like man this is taking too long i can't do this oh, so they you know, wanted to go uh, uh, take the shortcut now that happened evil and darkness heard their voice as well heard their prayers searching for an easier way to do this darkness and evil said come here i know how to make you shapeshift real easy but there's a couple things that you have to do to be able to obtain this power so some people were just like well what do you have to do there's certain steps and ceremonies you have to do to be able to learn how to shapeshift the way we do First off, you have to sacrifice a loved one, an immediate loved one. Whether that be your lover, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, or your child, or your grandparents. Somebody that you love and hold close and dear to your heart. You have to take them out into the reservation. There's the darkness. evil part right away. You have to sacrifice them to be able to first step into obtain this power. Now I know this is really dark, this is really gruesome, but this is the truth of how Yen Gloshi has become to be. So, there's some other steps that you have to take that I'm not going to actually disclose to you because a lot of that Thank you. is very gruesome and I'm not going to go into detail because a lot of it we're going to keep saying. People don't need that shit anyway. But once you complete all these tasks, you're able to learn how to shapeshift into evil and darkness. Now, a lot of things that uh, everyone seems to forget is where these skinwalkers come from. The Navajo Nation itself holds a lot of sacred power within its borders, and a lot of songs and ceremonies that tie into the mountains, the land, the sky, and its geological point where it's at. So a lot of times, if you were to be a skinwalker, you draw power from the natural landscape that you're at. Now, am I saying that there couldn't be a possibility of a skinwalker leaving the Navajo Nation? No. If they're really pretty high skilled enough to be able to leave the Navajo Nation, say go to the East Coast or learn how to shapeshift over there, use the mountain terrain over there and everything, yes, it's possible, but very, very unlikely. So what are some of the traits of a skinwalker? What are the, what are the things they can and cannot do? Can they turn into an elephant? My question is, is like, I mean, yeah, unlikely, yes, but you didn't say no. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Like, it just seems like if if somebody wants to do something, they will. Yeah, maybe, but, you know, they have to go and hunt and kill an elephant, wear its skin, and do the whole ceremony. Yes, they can turn into animals. They can shapeshift them into anything. Almost anything, really. But they would have to be able to kill the animal, skin it, mark it up with its markings and designs, put it through its own ceremonies and rituals to be able to prep it to be able to be worn and shapeshift into. Now, I've seen a lot of videos of people out there saying like their dog, you know, looks weird or there's, you know, all these other things like a poodle or something small. To be honest, 
Skinwalker is not going to skin a poodle, put it on its back, and be able to shapeshift into it. It's possible, but you know, it's going to be very hard to be able to shrink down to that size. Uh, typically, the coyote, the buck, the wolf are the main skins that were readily available in the Navajo nations. So there's also the bear, the mountain lion as well, but those are sacred animals and a lot of times those themselves could not be changed into the darkness. So you rarely, rarely see those being able to be used in skinwalker regalia or outfit. Coyotes and bucks and deer were mainly the skins used because there were plenty of those uh, in the Navajo Nation. For those of you out there who have seen videos of people hearing their voices being mimicked in the distance, yes, that is a true thing that actually happens. Another tactic that the skinwalkers like to use is dog whistles. So for those of you out there that don't know, the Navajo Nation is a very rural area. Homes are very spread out. Your nearest neighbor is a mile to a half mile away. So you're kind of out there by yourself. And typically in the Navajo Nation homestead, you'll always have dogs, either sheep herding dogs or protection dogs. And dogs are very attuned to when darkness comes around. They're the protectors of the home. Mm. So late at night when you're by yourself in your hogan, there's no one around, and your dogs start barking in the middle of the night, But then they stop. They're like wondering like why? Why did my dog stop barking? One tool that these skinwalkers use is dog whistles. They use these whistles, or bone whistles more specifically. They use these whistles to be able to hush up the dogs to be able to sneak in close to the home. And then they put these powders, they do these songs and these ceremonies to be Ooh, able to with put my your pets. animals and protectors to sleep. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone out there in the Navajo Nation knows, and if you're watching this, I'm sure you have stories of being home late at night, sleeping, and then you hear footsteps on your roof. Oh, that's fucking creepy. You hear rattles. You hear growls. You hear scratching on your door. For those of you out there, if you were to go to the Navajo Nation, I'm pretty sure about 90% of everybody on the Navajo Nation has experienced a Yanagloshi in their life. So what are some of the weapons that the Skinwalker uses? A Skinwalker typically uses natural base elements weapons. So a Skinwalker is typically known as a grave robber or a Navajo witch, but there's a lot more to it. So typically a lot of the weapons are based natural. off of natural elements. They're grave robbers. They go to the cemeteries, they dig up bodies, they grab the bones, and if they're still decaying, sometimes they use the flesh. A lot of the flesh from the human bones and body can be used as poisons to be able to bring sickness onto the people. So they make bone knives, bone darts. They grind up the bones after they collect them to make this powder. And it is said that these Yanagloshis can paralyze you. Another one of their powers that they have. They can come up to you and paralyze you and you can't do anything about it. And they grab that ground up bone powder and they blow it in your face. And if you don't get a ceremony soon, that is a curse that is put upon you and you will die. It's very, very powerful. So everybody out there, be sure to watch out. So what are the abilities yeah, yeah, yeah. that skinwalkers have? Other than per I, I, I chuckle, but uh, still take it fairly seriously. Never, never, never uh, discount uh, 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 the knowledge of another culture, ever. Paralyzing you, they have incredible speed. Because that's not the only place that I've heard things like this either. Um, there are a couple different cultures that would do stuff like this. There's a lot of reports on the reservation of people driving on dirt roads going 50 to 75 miles an hour, or even 100 depending on what, what kind of road you're on. <laughs> Not a lot of cops out there. But while these people are driving in the middle of the night coming back home from work or hauling wood, there were reports and signs 
of people running alongside their vehicles in the middle of the night. Oh, that's fucking and creepy, too. the only too. thing that can run that fast and out there is the Anagloshi. So who am I to talk about skinwalkers? Who am I to say what is and what isn't about a skinwalker? I know what a skinwalker is because we've dealt with them for many years. I've even had distant family relatives put on the skins and become a Yanagloshi. A couple ceremonies we've went out to families' homesteads to get rid of items of dead past relatives. And inside those items were Yanagloshi regalia. Skins, antlers, weapons, bone knives, bones itself, inside their belongings. So I know what skinwalkers can do to a person. Now I know you're not supposed to go out and talk about Yanagloshis or speak about Yanagloshis, but unless you know how to handle them. So I've had a lot of encounters with skinwalkers growing up. Uh, from a little kid uh, staying out at my great-grandmother's house to hearing them in the middle of the nights running out on a roof, knocking on the door, and copying our family members' voices from the outside to help draw us out. Now, these beings are very, very powerful to the normal person, but if you have the knowledge to be able to defend yourself against these monsters, you'll be all right. One of the biggest tools that these skinwalkers have against you is fear itself. Fear is their biggest tool that they have to be able to paralyze you, to gain control of you. And I know, middle of the night you're by yourself on the reservation and out there in the darkness you see a figure stand up. You see a, you see a coyote stand up on its two feet. Fuck I know, it's very terrifying. You gotta be a very special uh. person to not be terrified of that. <laughs> but... There's a lot of protections that you can use to be able to protect yourself in your home. Ash is one of the big things that you can use from a fire after you pray with it, after you put cedar down, mm. to put on yourself and around your home as well. There's a lot of ceremonial objects that not a lot of indigenous people have that they use in ceremonies that can be used to protect yourself in your home. Utilize these paraphernalia, utilize your jish to be able to protect yourself and your families out there. So, for everyone out there, if you see a TikTok video or a YouTube video about people talking about skinwalkers outside of the Navajo Nation, take it with a grain of salt. Because more than likely, it's similar Everything. to a skinwalker. It may be a shapeshifter. It may be, uh, who knows, it might be a doppelganger out there or even another spiritual being out there that can mimic voices. But... If you see your poodle doing something weird and you live, you know, all the way in Florida, New York, or Washington, D.C., you know, it's probably not a skinwalker. It's probably your dog just being weird. Now, I know this video isn't going to stop everybody from making false claims about what skinwalkers actually are, Yanagloshis. But maybe you'll be able to use this video to bring some light into your eyes and to be a little bit more skeptical about, skeptical about things that you see on the Internet. A lot of times I've just had enough, you know, seeing too many TikTok videos, too many YouTube videos about people see, claiming to see skinwalkers or know the history when they actually never lived it, when they've never actually been to our nation, when they've never actually heard the stories from our own people. They just did a quick Google search. So everyone out there, be safe. Here's a quick story of Yana Gloshi. And there's going to be more stories, more adventures on my paranormal journey. Oh, this is sweet Sean story. Clint from Sean nice. Clint Shadow Productions signing off. I'll go ahead, everybody. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. I hope, and I'll go ahead. Oh, I thought they were going to do a story. Oh, okay. Um, uh, that was cool. Um, not much that, um, I could, uh, possibly comment on there because that's not, um, this is their history and their secrets and their lore. Um, I have heard before that, um, that <clears throat> they don't talk about that kind of stuff outside the reservation, uh, and there are particular reasons for it. Um, but, um, that was very interesting. Um, 
thank you very much, uh, Shanklin uh, Shadow Productions, uh, for um, the um, for the lesson. All right. Let me know what you thought in the comments, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe, and share. <clears throat> Be safe, happy, and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.